in the beginning of business, we think that competition is so important, right? We got to be careful. We've always got to outwit our competition. It's always about what they're doing, trying to be faster, better than them. Eventually, listeners, you get to a point where you learn that it's not about competition. It's about collaboration. It's about people coming together and helping each other. Because as an industry, if we all come together and help each other and teach each other the things we've learned and the things that we should do and shouldn't do and all this that we've learned in our life, then we can help each other grow as an industry. And when we do that, Mrs. Jones, when we get to her front door, will know that what our worth is as an industry and not just have low ballers coming in and trying to, you know, uh, get the lowest bid out there and trying to undercut everybody because they'll realize as an industry that that's just not how it works. It's just not a good way to do it. So it, it, we all have to level up that way. And it's not through competition. It's through collaboration is my point. So bringing the indoors outside where you can have quality of life. I mean, that's one thing that we do in our industry is we build people's dreams. Yep. You know, homeowners will sit and they'll they'll glance through these beautiful catalogs, you know, hours on end or online looking at these projects and how they can transform their backyard into an outdoor living space. And then when they finally get up the courage and they lay down the cash, they are so excited. Mm-hmm. And I've mentioned this before, but how many times do you go to a customer and they're writing you out a check for a hundred or two hundred grand? with the biggest smile on your face. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just unheard of. You know, most people, you're putting a roof on your house and you're putting the ink through the check, you're, here's 20 grand, right? You're yeah. never going to enjoy it. But what we do, we're building these people's dreams. Yeah. And for them to write out a check and just smile, and they just can't wait to have their friends and their families around them in these outdoor living spaces. Mm-hmm. You know, we are, we are in a very unique uh, industry. And it's been encouraging for me to see it. it. It started out as, okay, yeah, you're just a landscaper. It's not that way anymore. It is an elevated um, profession of being a hardscaper and being able to build people's dreams. And you're seeing people make a really nice living at this. And to me, that's so encouraging to see our industry brought to those different levels. Yeah, Phil, you were saying, you were talking about, uh, you know, what we build as spaces for people. And I was just thinking back when I started, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollar jobs was big for us. And it was decent sized patios. But that's small today. And the reason it's small is because they're adding so many things to it. And there's so many components go into this stuff anymore. So what was easier for me to get started in would be is a lot harder today because of all the different components. But you think about different industries you mentioned woodworking. You think about a mechanic, I mean, they'll spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on tools to uh, speed up processes, to to um, create perfection on a project or on a task. And I looked at our industry and it was so limited to what we had out there. It was like, here's your hammer chisel. Okay, go to work. And I was so frustrated. And like I said, back in the 80s, there were virtually hardly any tools for our industry out there. So that's why I said we started cutting and torching, but um, it is amazing how it can speed up your efficiencies, how it can take, you know, when we first started, we're always looking for these big strapping guys to be able to install heavy products. And it got to the point, it's like, no, you don't need to do that. If you use excavators and use a clamp or something like that, all of a sudden it changes the whole mentality. And I I have one video that I have with two guys, one's on on the excavator, one on a clamp, but Neither one weighs more than 150 pounds. Mm. So you start taking that and they're moving a 104 pound block in the video. So just simple things like that. I guess going back to kind of getting back to your your question about mastery. I think you just think of the way things have evolved in our industry. And if you think you know it all, well, you're, you've already missed the point. You're, you're, you're in the mud already because even myself, I've been at it a long time, but it, it amazes me how things have transpired over the years. I mean, when we first started in the 80s, our manufacturer told us to lay our pavers on eight inches of stone dust. Well, that's obviously come and gone, totally unheard of. Now you got, and I'm on the ICPI committee that we're doing a study for open grade systems with three quarter clean, a three H chip swept in with a, with a polymeric sand. So I'm on a study committee for that. So those things that were never even thought of all of a sudden are starting to become the norm. And and I think it's important to take time and energy and money to invest in educating yourself, whether it be a class like ours or, or anything you go to or attend. Like I said, there's those little gold nuggets all along the way that 
if you can just glean one little piece from here or there, it can be life changing. You know, if you and if you get that out of your head, that know it all mentality, and yep. say no, there's lots to be learned. It's amazing how much you can you can uh, grasp onto and, and really propel yourself to to new levels. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you, you talk about you know when it comes to growth. Oftentimes, people you hear them say, you know, I've got 20 years experience in hardscaping. I've been doing this 20 years, and my question is always. Do you have 20 years experience or do you have one year repeated 20 times? <laughs> right? Honestly, think about it. Think that about is, that. Because, uh, there's a lot of wisdom in that. I love that. But it's true, right? Because I know in the beginning when I first started, it was not something I was excited about learning because I'm like, I just have to get enough and then I'm going to be fine. I figured if I just had enough knowledge, I could be to a point where I could just do that a lot and make some money. Then I realized after a while that once you learn more, you realize you don't know much. And when you learn more, you realize there's a lot more to learn. When you learn more, you learn there's a lot more to learn. So it's, the, the, I think the, the secret to all of this, I think the secret to life is to be a lifelong student, right? To constantly be learning, constantly be open to that. If you feel yourself getting to a point where you feel like you know everything, it's time to get into a different room, right? To become uncomfortable again, because if not, life is going to serve you a nice big fat slice of humble pie, right? And you're going to have to figure that out and, and eat that with a smile, right? Yeah. And there's also something else that I learned along that process was that, um, I don't know who said that. I don't know anybody does say this, but this, this is what I picked up and they said, look, you need to invest more in yourself than on yourself. And when it comes to investing in your knowledge, in, in your education, in equipment, that kind of stuff, things that you can invest in instead of on, you know, oftentimes we think in business, well, I'm going to make a bunch of money and I'm going to drive around in new trucks and new clothes and do fancy stuff to show everyone I'm so successful. And oftentimes if I see people doing it and I look and I say, are they successful or are they just trying to show the success? right? They're trying to show this so that they can feel like they can justify stealing 80 hours a week from their family to go out and work and not make any money, right? Because I was that guy. <laughs> I say this because I was that guy where I was, I will not fail. So I'll keep going. But unfortunately, we end up robbing from the people we love in order to make it happen. I just want to touch base too a little bit. You touched on it, but working alongside of the rest of our, the, the staff that work with me at, you know, in the hardscape industry, I'd obviously listen to their pain. I'd see what they were up against. And if you're in, in, in our industry for 10 years or more, 80% of you will have a back injury. Mm. I think this class really is about, and you mentioned it, it's life after work. Yeah. You know, that's your, should be your first priority. You know, faith, family, work. If you keep those things in priority, it will lead to success. But I think having life after work, that's really what it has to be about. Yes, we all have to go to work. We all have to make a living. But if we can be educated where we can be more successful and make more money in less time, that's really what it's about. I'm not saying cutting corners. I'm saying speeding up efficiencies, thinking about quality, having processes that, that lead to greater productivity, collaborating and learning how to uh, be more efficient so that we can work a normal day. And when we get home, we have the energy to go play ball with our kids or go out for ice cream things like that. You know, you mentioned the ice pack and the beer, right? Mm -hmm. Things we don't want to see in our industry. That's not what we, that's not what we're striving to be. We should be striving for a better quality of life. And that's really what this is about. Mm -hmm.